Greetings, everybody. My name is Dave DeWalt. I'm the founder and CEO of Night Dragon. We're coming to you live from Las Vegas at the Black Hat Security Conference. And we're having a lot of fun here at Black Hat with an incredible event here in Las Vegas. It's kind of like the halftime of 2023 as well. For those of you who know, I did a state of cyber event right after New Year's, the beginning of 2023. We tried to get a 360 degree view of the world of cyber. And we had a special guest, Microsoft team came in as well and gave us a view. And today I have an amazing friend, an amazing person, Kelly Bissell from Microsoft. And Kelly has a long, long career in cybersecurity, maybe longer than me, I think as well. well. The gray hair. Is the way the gray hair that turned gray because of that. Um, this gentleman ran a uh, security for all the security services were Accenture before that Deloitte also had a lot of corporate roles and now at Microsoft as well. Oh my gosh, thank you for joining my friend and great to see you as well. Talk a little bit about your role, if you would, just at Microsoft. I know you're running global security services, but what does that all encapsulate? Yeah, really what it means is uh, for all the CISO customers, help them use our products, help them design and implement those things run the dark team, which is our incident response. So if there's a bad hacker out there doing damage to our customers, we help them get out of that trouble and get them back on their feet. And then really make sense of where we're going with threat intelligence. So how do we take all those signals from around the globe and bring those insights to customers to keep them safe so they can see things happening before they get there? And then the last thing, how are we shaping the products? So how are we making sure that these products are operationally useful and we're on the leading edge of security. Microsoft has a little telemetry, I think, for <laughs> intelligence. Maybe talk a little bit about that for a minute because yeah. your visibility around the world is almost un unparalleled yeah. to anybody else. Just mention a little bit about that and how you do that. Yeah. Well, the, the, the telemetry is good. So for every Microsoft product on the planet, we can get signal from that, mm -hmm. but it's not complete. You know, we need signal from others like Apple and Cisco and others. So, but if we collect them and put them together, we can see things happening early. And if we can see a bad event happening for one customer, how can we use that to inoculate, if you will, all the customers around the planet? Right. So that's where we're going with this threat intelligence. It's amazing to watch Microsoft, one man's view on this, you know, for a guy who's been in this for many, many years, Microsoft's culture uh, led by Satya at the top, yeah. Uh, just everybody's mindset to harden product, make it a safer, more secure world, while also building a really strong business of security is really impressive. I was fortunate enough to speak at the Microsoft CEO Summit just a, right. a, with you, my That's friend. Right. And it was really amazing to see around AI security as well as Microsoft took a leadership role in some of those areas. So very, very impressive. Can you just take a second, since it's kind of the halftime show of the year, Talk a little bit from your vantage point, threat environment, maybe even a little of secure by design and things that are happening from the government, maybe to how that could apply to AI and things Microsoft's doing. Give us a little top view from uh, that. I think good, a halftime show is a great analogy, I think, because we are halfway through the year and um, we're seeing some trends. So one, and maybe I'll talk about the past and maybe the future. Mm -hmm. So the past is uh, we still see a lot of attacks happening in an elementary way. Uh, SQL injections, cross-site scripting, the same things that we've been fighting for many, many years. And this is where maybe the future comes into play, where AI, and I will adopt Jen Easterly, our, you know, at, at CISA, where she says, look, we got to secure by design. So how do we use AI to, be, to work within the IDE of the developer so they can actually prevent them from writing these vulnerable code? Mm -hmm. And if we could do that early, then we can prevent those vulnerable code from being out there in the marketplace. And that's just one area that we're going with AI. So it's pretty exciting. Talk a little bit more yeah. about AI and Microsoft, because I, I know most of the listeners know like Microsoft's yeah. had a big role in it, yeah. but it wasn't until I came to the CEO Summit to see it in its enormity. Yeah. So talk a little bit about that if well, you would. It's huge. I mean, look, the whole market knows we've been thinking about AI for 50 years, but I would call that theoretical AI. Mm -hmm. But with the birth of the cloud mm -hmm. and with open AI, mm -hmm. now we have the compute power. We're talking about tens of thousands of GPUs knitted together in data centers. So Dave, I mean, look, let me tell you the scale. Think about 35 football stadiums. That's what we're talking about the data center being. Mm -hmm. 
So now we've got the compute power to actually solve massive problems. So AI in Microsoft is a core platform with AI, Bing AI, business AI, GitHub AI, security AI. So working off that same platform. So Microsoft is shifting the company mm -hmm. to really use AI to empower everybody to do more. I and mean, there's that's been a, a vertical approach to that as ah. well by industry. That's right, pharma, retail, banking, right. and so forth. What would you say the adoption's like since January to August here from what you see? I mean, in January, yeah. I mentioned AI once or twice. Here I can't <laughs> stop using a sentence with AI. Yeah. What's the adoption been like? So uh, I'll give an example. We have, before we GA a product, we have what's called the early adopter program. And normally we have 15 or 20 customers. We have 800 who asked to be part of the program. Mm -hmm. 800. Mm -hmm. And then there are another 12,000 behind that mm -hmm. around AI. So the market is very, very excited by AI so they can use it to be not only safer, but they could be far more efficient. I mean, one little stat, the developer can reduce the amount of developer time on a, on a, on a program by 95%. Right. I mean, that is transformational. That was one of Satya's message yeah. to us at the summit too, was all this efficiency and productivity yeah. gain. You can feel that as part of just the inertia of what Microsoft's doing with all this capability. What do you see going forward a little bit too? I mean, a lot of angst, I will have to say, around GPT-5 coming and do we regulate, do we not regulate? Yeah. How do we make it safer? What's your advice to chief security officers? Because at the beginning, everybody just blocked all the websites and not, said, don't do anything yeah. until we understand and get our arms around this. Now education and information yeah. starting to creep in. What's your view to the CISOs? Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, CISOs, all of us CISOs are, have the high level of skepticism built in, which is really important. Uh, but how I see it is we should, one, how do we get ready for AI? Like, do we have the right controls in place? Because AI adopt or inherits controls. So are, are we clean? That's one. The second thing is how do I implement AI for security? How do I control that so that I have give access to that AI engine for those who need it? So I protect it. The next stage, the last stage, is around how do I use security across the enterprise to protect the company? And, and I would take a pragmatic approach. I mean, I wouldn't jump right into SOAR for AI, right. but, uh, but I would really take a pragmatic approach to around how do we write better code, but also how do we build um, or respond to incidents faster? What are you most excited about as a security professional for the last three decades yeah. like me? Like you, you, you look at this, potentiality of automation, yeah. co-pilot, and helping. In your world, what do you see as the biggest help to these security professionals? I actually think it's speed and capability. Mm -hmm. So, look, I, I, I'm so excited to see security co-pilot in the SOC because normally you would have to take this level four engineer who not only was a great security responder, forensics person, but also knew regulation, also knew the company operations, and also could write code. But tomorrow, we can actually bring a, a lower level business person that doesn't know how to write code, mm -hmm. and doesn't understand the entire environment, and can use ChatGPT or our security co-pilot to actually do all that for them. One of the biggest challenges we've been talking about is this cyber talent cap. We yeah. can't get everything. Microsoft's right. doing a lot to train people, but now the power of this yes. can also close that talent gap as well through automation and capability. Very much well. agree. I mean, there's a core, <laughs> there's a core level of people that uh, I would call them SEAL team experts in this market. But uh, right now with Security Copilot, you're able to actually lift all kinds of people up that know the business, but maybe are not security professionals. So we're arming them. That's why we call it co-pilot. Right. Really elevating cyber literacy. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for listening. One of the good guys in the world of cyber, Kelly Bissell, thank you for all your service. Thank you for all our partnership as well. And have yourself a wonderful black hat. Thanks, thank Dave. You. Appreciate yeah. it.